Hey guys, and welcome back to Monka where, I don't know, but yesterday I beat a video game, so I kind of want to talk about it because I got some interesting, I don't know, opinions, I guess, about this game. I think I got some controversial opinions about this game, so it must be a bit of a zesty little video, but yesterday I beat Sonic Colors, specifically the Ultimate Edition on the Nintendo Switch. Some history on this game is the fact that originally Sonic Colors, I think this is well known, but Sonic Colors originally came out on the Wii in 2010. In September 2021, they did the Ultimate version, bring it to the Switch, the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, and PC via Steam. Now, as far as I know, this is published and developed by Sega. Maybe or maybe not developed by Sonic Team, but there's no real indication on the cover, at least, or at least on the box, that it was was developed by Sonic Team, but the game took me about six hours to beat. That's guesstimating because the Switch numbers are never accurate, as you know, and the game doesn't have an in-game timer, but I would say about six to seven hours is what it took me to beat the game, but the interesting kind of history I have with this game is that I actually bought it when it came out in September of 2021. I played, I believe, three stages, and then I dropped the game. And so when I went to play this game again, I wasn't exactly sure why I dropped it until I played it all the way through, and then I realized that, you know, I kind of had a reason to drop it. But when I beat Sonic Frontiers, I kind of want to play some of the Switch games that Sonic had on as well, and I already had Sonic Colors, so I wanted to play this one again. Also, I intend to play Sonic Forces because, honestly, I think it'll be a fine game, despite people shitting on it. It's probably a fine game, but along the short, my opinion on this is, honestly, I see a lot of people say that this is a pretty great game. My opinion is that this is a not-so-great game, to be honest, and that's really unfortunate. There are two really strong stages in this game, and then the other five are just really weak, in my opinion opinion but we'll get to that when we get to the gameplay but in terms of the graphics the graphics look fine to be honest i can tell where they updated them for the definitive edition so to speak a lot of the levels and enemy designs and stuff like that look a lot better for whatever reason or another sonic looks like he came straight from 2010 and looked like he wasn't even updated which is kind of shitty but you know the game looks fine otherwise and the game runs fine because you know it's just a 3d sonic game from 2010 so it runs perfectly fine so there's no worries on that front so in terms of the graphics and put gameplay besides sonic's character model it looks fine and it runs just fine so there's no complaints in that department either in terms of the music and voice acting the music is decent for most stages but there are actually some absolute bangers in this game soundtrack mainly it's the songs for sweet mountain slap pretty good the intro song slaps as well but mainly the big slapper so to speak on this soundtrack is the planet wisp song all acts every act of planet wisp for the soundtrack is an absolute banger like i don't even know like if they were on the same shit that they were on when they made planet wisp soundtrack this entire game soundtrack would be an absolute banger but planet wisp even if you don't intend to play the game i'd absolutely recommend listening to that song in the ost because it is an absolute banger even the act variations for the song are pretty good something else i guess worth mentioning in the soundtrack as well is that every stage has kind of like a main overarching song but every act of that stage kind of has a variation on that song otherwise the soundtrack is pretty decent i wouldn't say there's anything bad in here to be honest it's just decent but plant wisp absolutely slaps as well as sweet mountain and the intro song are pretty good as well now in terms of voice acting the voice acting honestly i don't even know what to mention about this because the voice acting is what it is this is sonic as sonic voice acting to be honest if you know what sonic voice acting sounds like then you're very much familiar with this voice acting it does what it does to be honest you know Eggman's voice actor is good Sonic's voice actor is exactly the same as it used to be pre-frontiers which means it's the gotta go fast Sonic that we all know and I guess love maybe probably not the voice actors are what they are if you're familiar with Sonic then you know exactly what you're getting yourself into but in terms of music and voice acting the music is decent it's got a kind of a couple that are like slaps and then like a uh, planet wisp which slaps so hard that's like first degree assault but other than that the soundtrack's decent and in terms of the voice acting Actors. It's Sonic voice actors. If you know, you know, pretty much. Now, in terms of the story and characters, there's not a lot to talk about here because it's a Sonic ass Sonic game. I feel like that's a term that I've used a couple times now, but it's really just that is what it is. The story is that Eggman has built an amusement park in which he has built to quote unquote like atone for his crimes or whatever the fuck. And of course, Sonic and Tails go to investigate it. And of course, it is not a theme park in which Eggman is atoning for his sins, but he is doing his nefarious 
nefarious shit that he usually does. Specifically, this time he has found an alien race known as Wisps, and he is farming their energy for his ultimate weapon. And once Sonic and Tails discover this, they set out to stop Eggman. That's pretty much the story, and it does not get any deeper than that. And it, like I said, it is just a Sonic ass story. If you know, you know, it doesn't do anything incredible, you know, and it doesn't really have to because it's a Sonic game, but it's a fine story, I guess, but I really didn't give all that much of a shit. Now, in terms of the characters, there's only really five characters really worth talking about. The Wisps are technically characters, but they don't really talk or anything, so they're not really worth mentioning. Sonic and Tails are their usual selves. It's the meme -y type of Sonic games, I would say pre-Frontiers, so it's got all the usual tropes and memes that you're used to. Now, hilariously enough, in colors, Sonic gets upstaged by Eggman and his two robot companions known as Orbot and Cubot, which is fucking hilarious that these characters upstaged the main character. Honestly, Eggman's a really likable character anyways as a villain. Even though he's supposed to be a bad guy, you still like him. But his two robot companions, Orbot and Cubot, add a lot to his character. And the chemistry between those three characters is absolutely hilarious. Orbot and Cubot make a ton of, like, hilarious and stupid comments that just, like, honestly are just fucking hilarious. Like, they just say a bunch of stupid shit. Like, at one point, Sonic beats a boss, and Orbot and Cubot are cleaning up the mess of, like, the remnants of the beat-up robot. And pretty much one of the robots makes a comment that, you know, if you view this from a robot perspective, it's pretty fucked up. And I mean, that's pretty hilarious, to be honest. But as well, Eggman's interaction with Orbot and Cubot are hilarious just because he gets, like, pissed off at him, like, for shit that they do. And it's just, honestly, their chemistry is hilarious. It's probably the best part of the game when you get those slices of, like, Eggman or Orbot and Cubot because those interactions are absolutely hilarious. And like I said, they upstage Sonic and Tails, which are supposed to be the main protagonists of the game. But in terms of the story, it's a Sonic-ass story. And, you know, if you know, you know, it's got all the memes and tropes and usual shit of a Sonic story. In terms of the characters, honestly, there actually is a pretty strong character segment to this game, to be honest, just because of the interactions between Eggman and the robots are just fucking hilarious. But in terms of the gameplay, we are getting into the meat and potatoes of Sonic Colors, or in general, just Sonic games in general. The first thing I had to mention before getting into the gameplay too deep are the new mechanic that they decided to add into this game, which are the Wisps. Now, this is the second iteration of the boost era of Sonic games, the first one being Sonic Unleashed, this one being the second one. Sonic Unleashed's trope was that during the daytime, you'd have the boost era Sonic segments, and then at night, you would have the Werehog segments, which were by far the worst part of the game. In this game, it would be all like daytime Sonic segments, except the Wisps are an added addition that, honestly, I do not really like. Wisps are pretty much the aliens that are introduced into the game, and you can collect them throughout the game, and they will give Sonic special abilities. Now, these special abilities include shit like laser, which, which lets you kind of like warp drive through a level a certain amount, a ghost one that lets you float through the air and warp through platforms in the game, as well as there's some other ones. There's spike, which lets you climb on walls and shit like that. There's cube, which is kind of like a P block type of ordeal from Mario that changes certain blocks to a different like format that you, so you can pass through them. There's also a few more. I attempted to use them as little as possible because I feel like it just detracted from the experience overall. All I want to do in a Sonic game is run fast and wisps really slow down the gameplay and it makes it feel less like a Sonic game. And I really do not like that addition. I wish Sonic Colors was just a Sonic game without those additions because I feel like wisps just slow down the gameplay and make it feel like a not a Sonic game to be honest. But with that squared away, I feel like it's best to dive into the stages next. Now, Sonic Colors has seven stages in total and 45 acts contained within those stages. Six of the stages have seven acts each and then the final stage has only three acts. Now breaking the stages down, the first two stages are pretty good. Tropical Resort is the first stage and honestly it is just a boost era Sonic at its finest. You're just boosting and running through levels and it just feels good. The gameplay is fast. The levels are fast and it feels good like a boost era Sonic game should feel. It just feels fast and that's all I ever want from a boost era Sonic game. The boss for Tropical Resort and really the bosses throughout the entire game aren't really all that mentionable because it's really easy and you can just beat it relatively easy. It's just not really worth mentioning. The second stage, which is Sweet Mountain, is another boost era Sonic aim at his finest level. You just boost through the levels, and honestly, you can just go fast, and there's a decent amount of actually good platforming. It's in the 3D format, so the platforming works out pretty well, but it's just a good boost era Sonic game, and a lot like Tropical Resort, you can, for the most part, ignore the wisps, and I feel like that is something I wish carried throughout the entirety of the game. I feel like once the game starts focusing on the wisps, it gets worse, but for Sweet Mountain, Mountain and Tropical Resort, at least you can ignore 
the Wisp aspect of the game and just play Boost Era Sonic. The boss fight for this level is also not worth mentioning, but the third stage, Starlight Carnival, is where this game starts to go downhill, and honestly, it never really recovers from here. Starlight Carnival really kind of sucks because it focuses on this weird kind of quick step kind of on rail segment that really gives you no control over how you can play. You're just running and dodging shit throughout at least half of the stages on this level. And it really just sucks because it just doesn't give you a lot of freedom. Whether the wisp aspect of this part was bad or not, I can't remember because honestly what sticks out in my mind is the fact that at least three of the stages are an on rails experience where you're just running and dodging shit or jumping over shit. Starlight Carnival is where I dropped the game and honestly I can't blame myself because it's just kind of a shitty way to, I don't know, go from this really great two stages to this really shitty stage where it just feels like it's fixed on rails for the most part. As well in this one, the boss fight is not worth really mentioning. It's super easy like the previous two stages. Planet Wisp is the fourth stage and honestly this is kind of where the game, it balances out a little bit. It's not as bad as Starlight Carnival but it still isn't all that great. It has some good boost era segments to it. The main issue with this one is the focus on the Wisp aspect which will force you to use Wisps and really I think this is the part of the game where it will force you to start using Wisps and really that's where the game starts to kind of drag. As well Planet Wisp has a focus on platforming and when I get to the controls of Sonic that is not a good thing to have focus on because the platforming in Sonic Colors is not good. This is specifically the slow platforming is just really bad. So mainly Planet Wisp it has some good boost era segments but it focuses on Wisps and platforming which really slows down the game and it isn't all that good. And again the boss fight is really not all that memorable. Now Aquarium Park is the fifth stage of Sonic Colors and this one is pretty bad to be honest because it's a water focused Sonic stage and if you've ever played a Sonic game water segments in Sonic game absolutely suck and so Aquarium Park sucks throughout the entire game because it has a heavy focus on underwater Sonic segments and as well it has a really heavy focus on wisps. So Aquarium Park really really sucks probably besides starlight carnival it's the second worst stage in this game because golly once you mix underwater segments with the wisps you just really slow this game down to a fucking drag and when i say a drag i mean like a snail's crawl of a fucking game so aquarium park really sucks the boss fight isn't even worth mentioning it's really boring to be honest like the other ones but asteroid coaster is the sixth stage and pretty much the final stage of the main six honestly asteroid coaster sucks a lot as well because it has a lot of that fixed on rail segments kind of like they did in the Starlight Carnival segment except it's worse than Starlight Carnival because to be honest it has you fixed in coaster segments where really all you can do is jump and then eventually when you link up with another cart you can jump it to the other cart but besides that it's all fixed on rails and really boring as well it has some wisp segments that really just suck and slow the gameplay down and as well it has a heavy heavy focus on platforming which really really just slow the game down again. So Asteroid Coaster sucks a decent amount as well and as well Asteroid Coaster is when the boss difficulty spikes an incredible amount to where it becomes unbelievably frustrating. Asteroid Coaster's boss is unbelievably frustrating and I just can't believe it because it's just like the previous five bosses are so easy and then you hit Asteroid Coaster and the difficulty just spikes and it absolutely sucks but Asteroid Coaster is another level where the quality is just another dip but Terminal velocity is the seventh and final act of the game and it consists of three acts and honestly terminal velocity can go straight to hell because i fucking hate it i said only a couple minutes ago that starlight carnival is probably the worst level in the game but now that i actually thought about it terminal velocity is actually the worst stage in this game because it fucking sucks now the first act i might as well break it down act to act because there's only three of them the first act is the on rails running shit that i mentioned in starlight carnival and that sucks and it's also unbelievably difficult for no good reason it took me about 15 minutes to beat that one act and it pissed me the fuck off. Off. I hated it. Now the boss fight is the, actually the second act of this stage. It's not the third one. It's actually the second one. And the boss fight can go straight to fucking hell. I hated it. It took me half an hour to beat. And it was by far the most difficult thing in this fucking game. Literally took me half an hour to beat. And I just had to keep retrying and retrying. Because Eggman is a fucking bastard. Who can just use his unfair moves throughout the entirety of that segment. And it is just absolutely unfun in the misery experience like i said it took me half an hour to beat it and it just pissed me to fuck off so that boss absolutely sucked and i hated it and like i said it can go straight to fucking hell and the third act of the 
this game is another on rails running segment except it only lasts for a minute and you don't even really get to finish it because it concludes the story and it cuts off about halfway through so that sucks and it's underwhelming so yeah terminal velocity sucks and it sucks because a lot of the stages in this game suck to some degree or another because besides tropical resort sweet mountain and honestly i'll let plant wisp off the hook and say it's decent the rest of them suck pretty much and that's a bad experience because honestly the game opens up with the two best levels and just goes downhill from there it's disappointing because if the rest of the levels were like the first two levels honestly this would be a great game but as well as those stages this game has something called game land which is kind of a bland and boring little side distraction i guess so to speak it's pretty much 2d side scrolling sonic segments that are really just uncolorful and uninspired but you can do them to unlock the chaos emeralds and eventually unlock supersonic to unlock certain parts of those levels though you had to collect the red rings throughout certain levels i only played about these seven it allowed me to play without collecting all the red rings and then i kind of just stopped after that because i didn't really want to collect all of them because honestly the game land levels are so boring that's just not even worth playing but with all that squared away the stages and the wisps and all that that just leaves to talk about the controls of sonic and in this game sonic control is pretty fine but there are some complaints to be had and now in terms of 3d sonic segments they're pretty all right the only real complaint i have about them is the fact that sonic cannot quick step now you can quick step in the fixed on rail segments but you can't quick step on like the 3d sonic parts where you're actually free running which kind of sucks usually it was left bumper right bumper and generations i think i kind of wish that it was in this game but this was pre-generation so i kind of understand that but kind of sucks that it's not there because it kind of makes it awkward to control sonic at points but 3d so running sonic is fine one of my only real complaints is the fact that sometimes they throw in some shit in the levels that kind of slows down those 3d sonic segments such as sliding and they also have these curbs that can trip up sonic when he's boosting which kind of sucks to be honest but it feels good when you're playing 3d sonic it's a boost era sonic game so it just feels good to run and go fast when it allows you to at least but the only thing i can really complain and that also relates to the 2d sonic segments is the spin dash which kind of gets annoying at points because spin dash auto locks on and if you're just trying to do a double jump upon your second jump it immediately does a lock on and you have to spin dash towards something upon your second jump it kind of sucks because sonic always locks on to an enemy so if you're trying to do a double jump you really can't if an enemy or anything is nearby that you lock on to because it'll just spin dash towards it and it kind of sucks because you just don't want to lock on to shit sometimes it just will immediately lock on you'll just dash towards that enemy and sometimes it'll just throw off the platforming but the 2d sonic segments in this game are pretty decent to be honest but the 2d sonic segments are mainly where my complaint with the platforming comes in because honestly sonic does not control well for platforming in this game the main reason being because the momentum you expect on jumping is just isn't there and it's just kind of awkward now what i'm used to in a 3d platformer or really in a platformer in general is when you jump and you release off the stick while traveling through the air there's kind of a natural arc that your character will travel that they'll land on the platform so if you jump and you kind of have the segment and you let go the character will just kind of travel in a certain arc you'll kind of know where they land sonic is like a bag of bricks that's kind of weirdly precise when he jumps because once you let off the stick mid jump sonic just drops immediately so you'll pretty much be jumping jumping trying to platform and when you're letting go of the stick or at least i do because that's just kind of what feels natural from playing other platformers sonic just drops immediately straight down it just feels kind of weird to be honest i can't recall if they ever fixed this in future games but it just feels so awkward to do this precise platforming that the game wants you to do and to just drop like a bag of bricks every time you try to do platforming because you just release off the stick and sonic is just so precise that he just doesn't have the momentum when you release off the stick that you would expect from it that he just drops immediately so it makes the precise platforming really awkward i just wish that sonic had some momentum during those moments because that's just what feels natural because when you're jumping and you release off the stick you just expect sonic to travel with some momentum but he just drops immediately because the controls are so precise but that led to some frustrating moments where i would fall off platforms and have to retry again and especially since they have some really narrow platforms that you can just essentially miss because that momentum just isn't there but in terms of the gameplay i have aired out all my grievances i've said what i've liked honestly and i also called the homing attack a spin dash so that is something i have to correct but nonetheless i don't like the wisps i like three of the stages enough and really do not like the other four and like i said terminal velocity can fuck off all the way and honestly in terms of the way sonic controls i enjoyed it enough and like i said it's really enjoyable when it allows you to do boost era sonic shit and go really fast when it doesn't and it slows you down it's just really unenjoyable like i said the platforming feels a bit too precise for my liking and the homing attack in air just feels 
sometimes kind of annoying because just because it automatically locks on but overall my opinions on sonic colors should be pretty obvious sonic colors i hate to say this honestly because honestly i wish this game was better but it just isn't it's not that great and honestly i can't recommend it to be honest sonic generations came right after this game and it did a lot of things just a lot better to be honest especially in the 3d sonic segments and it really is just a definitive version of boost era sonic sonic colors honestly it just has another gimmick to it which i really wish it didn't i feel like if sonic colors didn't have the wisps and it just went for straight pure platforming and speed it'd have been a better game the focus on the wisp just takes away from what sonic should be and honestly it just like, kind of sucks to be honest now like i said for the first two stages this game is absolutely pure bliss because you can ignore the wisps and it allows you to run fast like boost era sonic and it's just a lot of fun after that though it just kind of falls apart until the end and it never gets better and honestly i held out hoping that the game would get better and that maybe oh maybe some later stages will get back to the boost era sonic ship but it just never did so honestly i'm really disappointed in sonic colors i really wish that i wasn't saying that right now because i really just want to like this game more than i did but i don't know how sonic forces was people shit on it but honestly i think it's going to be better than this game but we'll have to see when we get around to it but thank you very much for watching until next time i'll see you stay chill